Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm reading that from, see, I, I use different versions. That is the New King James Version. Uh, come on, come on, read it, come on. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Whatever version, transliteration, translation you have. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can go back to your seat. Tonight, for those of you who are taking notes on this Wednesday night, and I hope that you are, I, I can promise you, you're going to need these notes. <laughs> I said you're going to need these notes now. Amen. We're gonna, this is what we're talking about tonight. Defeating the devil is Jesus' part. Standing firm is your part. That's a little long, but, but it'll work. Defeating the devil is whose part? Jesus' part. Standing firm is whose part? It's, it's, it's our part. It's our part as believers, as Christians. Don't be afraid of that word saint, you know, because you've got to be careful what you say. Ain't nobody no saint. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, amen. That, that's not, that's the Bible. Don't, don't start saying that's old-fashioned or that's that. It's not around. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Amen. He's coming back for the saints. Amen. Praise God. So we, we bless the Lord uh, tonight. Um, let, let's continue in, in, in our teaching, the God kind of faith. Have y'all gotten anything out of this? I, I just want to know now because I, I don't want my teaching to be in vain. Praise God. Say it. The God kind of faith. <laughs> yeah, here we are in the midst of a Christmas season and... Y you've got to know that the devil is already defeated, and Christ Jesus did that. He did it through his death, burial, and resurrection. Are y'all getting this? So it's not your job. It is not my job. It is not your calling. It is not my calling to go and defeat the devil. That ought to take the brakes off right there. You know, it's just you ain't got to sweat no more. He's already defeated. See, you see a lot of a lot of. A lot of believers, a lot of churches would want you to believe that it's our responsibility to defeat him. Christ defeated him. Now, you just got to stand firm and walk in it. Come on. Somebody say amen. Are, are y'all getting this? Amen. Praise God. So, so what do you do when, when you're fully, um, uh, what do you do when you're fully clothed with the identity of Christ? I just told you the lateral part of that. What do we do? We stand firm. Because we're clothed with the identity of Christ right now. When, when God the Father looks on us, he sees the blood. He sees, he sees we, are, we are identified. We have the identity of Christ. We are, we are Christ in the earth. Come on. You got to get this now. Amen. Now, here, here's a problem. The problem in the church is this. The problem among saints is, and I love Romans 12, um, I'm glad you're writing that down. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. That's where uh, the Apostle Paul, brother who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, this is where he said, um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your body what? That's right. Not dead, but alive. A living sacrifice. Then he said what? Holy. Hagios. Hagios. Holy. What else? And acceptable. What else? Unto God, keep saying it. This is your reasonable service. And then he said, do not be, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. I'm going somewhere. But be, tra be ye transformed. What? Why? Perfect will of God. Amen. Here's, here's look, maybe I'm going to be the first one to tell you, but look, when you and I, got born again, when we received Jesus Christ, we were not to add his identity to who we were. I'm talking about our thinking. Am I making sense? See, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of believers want to wanna, wanna pack that in on top of what he's already done. No, 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 no. Look, you, you got to, look, your, your mind needs to be transformed. This is because believers who do that, that's why, that's why they act crazy, they cuss folk out, they flip out on you, you know. You don't know, 
you know, you don't know which person's going to show up the next day, the work, the, the next day at work, or whatever, or who you're going to go home to, or whatever, is because they don't know their identity in Christ. If you ever tap into, and I keep telling you, you got to start talking to the Holy Ghost. He's a person. Yeah, you got to talk. We're going to deal with that tonight. Amen. Uh, so, so the first word the Apostle Paul uses is what in Ephesians 6.10? Finally, my brother. And then he says what? So one translation says, and, and it goes on to say, stand. Right in, that same, right in that same area in Ephesians 6, right there in that same area. After you know all you can do to do, you got to stand. Say stand. stand. So the Apostle Paul does not tell us, watch this, to attack or to mount up a massive charge against the devil. He does not tell us that. Some of you are too defensive. You're, you're reactive. When you stand, you're proactive. Are you getting this? This is, this is why you keep jumping off at the handle, and you can't handle things in life. It's because, look, you, you God, stop charging folk. The Lord didn't tell us to mount up a charge against the devil. Christ has already done it. Can I help you with something? He's already taken over. I know it's cute, man. I, I, and I, don't misunderstand me. I, I love it myself. It's nice. All we got to do is walk in it. <laughs> That's all we got to do is go and walk in it. Amen. So, so the word of God tells you and me to stand on the truth, watch this, of what Christ has already accomplished. Now, see, for those of you who are born again here tonight that are listening to me and, and you can't get this, it's because you're trying to add this on top of that old stinking thinking. That, that's it. Look, they're in contrast to one another. Your old thinking is, look, it's in contrast. It fights the word of God. Oh, it's going to always be like that, Bishop. No, it's not. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> so standing firm means refusing to give in to the devil's temptation and refusing to give up on what God is seeking to do in and through you. Did you get that? Standing firm means refusing to give in to the devil's temptation and refusing to give up on what God is seeking to do in and through you. Say, standing firm. You've been giving in to that same old, I got to put, sick, weak temptation for years. Come on. It's time. That's childish. Come on now. Hallelujah. Now, we, we come on now. You're still acting like you're in high school or something. Are, are y'all getting this? <laughs> in Ephesians 6.10, just jot it down. In Ephesians 6.10, Ephesians 6 chapter, verses 10 through 18, the Apostle Paul repeatedly uses phrases of resistance. Here's some of them right here. Be strong in the Lord. God, here's another one. Stand against the wows. Here's another one. Withstand in the evil day. <laughs> here's another one. Having done all to stand. God. Here's another one. Stand therefore. <laughs> this is some good stuff. It makes my voice change when I think about it. Praise God. Hey, Amen. Make you do a Barney Five. Good stuff. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. James said, jot it down. You got to learn these scriptures. James 4, 7. What does he say there? Submit yourself, therefore, to God, and you can do what? Resist the devil, and what will happen? He'll flee from you. See, see, he didn't say nothing about going attack him. Mm -mm, no, -uh, no, no. He just said, submit yourself to God. Because anybody submitted to God, he's going to run. 
Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Paul, look, uh, Peter also wrote, jot this down. First Peter, this is Bible study. First Peter, fifth chapter, verses eight and nine. Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say resist. resist. The word for resist in 1 Peter chapter 5 there does not mean to debate, watch this, or argue against the devil. Because that's what some saints do. They, they talk to the devil more than they do, more than they do Jesus. God the Father and the Holy Ghost. Devil, I ain't playing with you. Devil, I'm tired of your behind. Devil, you make me sick. Get out of here, devil. He's laughing at you. He's laughing at you. You ever work with people on your job or perhaps in, in high school or college uh, or, or people you know in the community that people can just get anything on them? And it's like they wear them out all day long. It's like they come in there and say, where's he at? I got a saddle. I'm going to ride him again today. And they fall for it. <laughs> That's where a lot of saints are with, with the devil. You're talking to him. Don't, don't talk to him. Somebody shout amen. Um, so Ephesians 6.10 in our text, jot this down. Ephesians 6.10 is a command. Ephesians 6.10 is a command. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Is a command. Say Ephesians 6.10 is a command. Ephesians 6.10 is a command. Mm -hmm. It's a command. It's a command. Write this in your note. God does not command his sons and daughters to do things you cannot do. God does not command his sons and daughters to do things you cannot do. <laughs> Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Where, where is that found? Philippians where? 4.13. Amen. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you again. I don't get caught up in whether you brought your Bible in, your smartphone, your iPad, your iPod, your Note 1, Note 2. I don't care. Just, just know your Bible. Just know some word. Because truth of the matter is when, when the attack comes, more than likely, you're not going to have none of that stuff in your hand. That's why David said, thy word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. God, this is good. Mm. So stop saying I can't. Stop saying that. Stop saying I can't. And start saying, say it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care what it is. You can do it. I can, I can almost sing that. You can do it. Yeah, for the millennials. You can, you, can, you, can, you can do it. You can do it. They like that kind of stuff. <laughs> you can do it. See, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can stand and resist the devil in Christ's strength. Did you get that? You can stand and resist the devil through Christ's strength. <laughs> you can. Amen. <laughs> Knowledge based on past experience. And we know, <laughs> come on now, that we can resist the devil through Christ's strength. Don't we? Come on now. Come on, affirm this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Christ, you have power. But here's, here's, here's the caveat here. But you and I didn't manufacture this power. We can't muster it up. Are you getting this? In Christ, the devil knows you got power in Christ. But you can't manufacture this power. Mm -hmm. Amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about some things. How do you get this power? We're going to deal with prayer, okay? 
going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, write this down. When you put on the whole arm of God, you put on his power. When you put on the whole arm of God, you put on Christ's power. Mm -hmm. If you stand up uh, to or resist the devil in your own humanity or your own strength, or individual power, what will happen? You'll get what? Defeated? You'll fail? Every time. Amen. There are a lot of, lot of, lot of saints, a lot of Christians, a lot of believers are, are losing. You ever, you, ever, you ever know your team loses to teams they shouldn't lose to sometimes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on now. Where are my sports fans in here? Elder Sharon Jagner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she don't even have a team. <laughs> but, but she knows that. This is true. Amen. And that's frustrating. There are a lot of believers losing battles that they shouldn't lose. There are a lot of believers that should be much further along than they currently are. <laughs> Hopefully, we're going to help you tonight. Amen. Here's a caveat. Christ Jesus has defeated the devil. Christ Jesus, you should not be getting up thinking, I hate to go back to work tomorrow. Never say that. Never say that. No, 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 no. no. You, you're the one that God's going to use to shift that place. Amen. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Come on now. You are the one. Now, the problem is you hadn't prayed enough before you left house. He left home. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because now I, I, I do this. I, I do it, and sometimes my wife says, "Just say something. Learn to do this." I'll, I'll ask him. I'll, I'll say, "Holy Spirit, before I leave home, am I leaving anything?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just keys, phone, that sort of thing. Am I leaving anything? Mm -hmm. Tell him everything. Every struggle, every frustration, tell him, tell him. Remember the old church? Remember the song that we used to, used to sing, Jesus on the main line? Come on now. Some of y'all just as old as I am. Tell him what you want. Good theology, though. If he's sick and can't get well, tell him what you want. He wanted to say somewhere in that phone, somewhere in that song, I got a telephone in my bosom. I can call him anytime anywhere because I know he still answers prayer. God, that's powerful right there. Amen. So there's no comparison to God's power to that of the devil. Jot it down, 1 John 4, 4. There's no comparison to the power that God has in comparison to what the devil has. There's no comparison. It's like night and day. God's all powerful. The devil is not. You got to give him some room. He, look, look, Paul says in Galatians, I was sharing this today with, uh, with someone, and I said, Paul says in Galatians, he says that Jesus has already defeated the curse, uh, defeated that curse, he's talking about generational curses, but the problem is many of us open it back up again. Yeah. We get mad, say stuff, shouldn't be saying, and the devil, there he comes. He's having a heyday, a field day, Amen. When you accepted Jesus as your Savior, God the Holy Spirit, what did he do? He came and did what? Live, take up residence where? Yeah. On the inside, say, say the Holy Spirit lives inside of me right now. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. And he lives in me. Right now. And watch this. You can't grieve him away either. You can grieve him, but you can't grieve him away. When you start doing this stupid stuff, being sneaky, you know, that's the problem I got with sororities and fraternities because you got one on, on, on every campus, there's one power, sorority or fraternity. But this problem I got with them is they got too many secrets. Too many secrets. That ain't biblical. 
Now, wait a minute. Now, why can't you tell me the secret now? Because I want to know what it is. Because we're going to deal with it. You don't want to know, Bishop. I want to know. It's going to set you free. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to the Lord. That's good for couples too, by the way. That's, That's good for couples. That there's nothing I hide from my wife. It's good for singles too. Hallelujah. You need an accountability partner. Shout amen. amen. <laughs> you ever know, I like, I like, you know, anything to do with animal planet, wild kingdom, stuff like that. You ever notice, you ever notice who those lions and hyenas and the wild pack of dogs, you ever notice which animal they go after? The weakest one. The weakest one. And see, the reason the devil, come on now, come on, I'm from the country, I got to tell you, keep kicking your behind. Because you think you can do this thing on your own. You run around talking about, I don't need, I don't know, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody. Yes, you do. Like me, yeah, you, you need King, you need, you need other believers. Like, ain't nobody bless me like God, like God. You ever notice God uses a, a human being to give you that money? You ever notice God uses a doctor sometimes, a lot of times? Come on now. Hallelujah. That, that's why he, he goes after the weakest. Watch this. There's some weak ones in here tonight. What make you want to skip? <laughs> but there's some weak ones right up in here tonight. And your mind's like bouncing off this wall. You can't get it together. Last Wednesday and this past Sunday, you were on target. But tonight, you're weak. That's why you keep, that's why the, you keep falling for this dumb stuff. Yes, Talk to the singles a minute. Talking to guys that, and, that you ain't got no benefit, and they dummying you down to their level. Yes. You, don't, you don't need education, baby. Let me teach you some things. What you going to teach me? <laughs> you can't teach me nothing. <laughs> hallelujah. Shout hallelujah up in here. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah up in here. Say, I love Jesus. We got to go. We got to go. Come on, come on. We got to go. So, so his strength, watch this. This is one of the great, there are several ways, but I personally believe this, that his strength is released the most through prayer. (laughs) I, I know through his word, when you meditate on it, through praise and worship, but prayer. That's where the power is released. That's where it's at. You, you'll feel it cut. It, it is through prayer. And you ran out of the house this morning because you said, I'm running late for work. I would much rather be late for work and get my prayer time in. Because that, that place was there before you got there. It'll be there after you're gone. What you saying, Bishop? Promotion. Promotion. So you're thinking negative. Are they going to fire? <laughs> I didn't know I was going to lose my job. Promotion. Somebody shout amen. amen. <laughs> Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. One of the main reasons that so many believers in Christ are weak is that they do not pray when the devil attacks them. I'll say it again. One of the main reasons that so many believers in Christ are weak is that they do not pray when the devil attacks them. I can see you now. Where'd that come from? I didn't deserve that. You ought to be praying. Amen. Hmm. Prayer is not a piece of the spiritual armor against the devil. It's not listed as a piece of the spiritual armor. Right there in Ephesians 6. Finally, my brain, tell him, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. He talks about, you know, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of rights. Prayer's not mentioned. No, 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 not, not as a piece of the spiritual armor. Are you with me? Amen. Prayer is what we do once we get the armor on. 
Oh, this is good. Yeah. In other words, prayer reflects our identity with Christ. We are identified with him through prayer. Come on. Shout amen. amen. Now, the devil's goal is to keep us from establishing a vibrant relationship with God. He will do anything because he can't unsave you. I hope you know that by now. That you've, If you've been in this, in this ministry under this covering 30 days and you didn't know it before you got here, you know it now and say, I receive it, Bishop, in Jesus' name. That no man will be able to pluck me out of God's hand. And nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. So he can't unsave you, but he wants to mess up your relationship with God. That, that's why he'll send these little thoughts in your mind. Watch this. While you're praying to get you off track. Yeah. Ooh. I felt that strong. Somewhere back up in here. <laughs> yeah, you'll be praying. It's like you'll be like, be like thinking about some movie. And you're praying. That's the devil. you you praying, and he got you thinking about some ex. You ought to praise God. He lets you survive that relationship. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on now. If you ain't got nothing else to be thankful for, you ought to be thankful that he lets you survive some stuff. Come on now. You're sitting up in the night trying to be pretty and cute. But I'm going to say it again. You ought to be thanking God tonight that he lets you survive some stuff, some people, some things, some places. Hallelujah. Now, some people got that little cute testimony, but not me and you. We done been through hell and back. But we're still standing firm. God, God, God. See, see, your problem is you got to get delivered from people. People ain't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. You need to stop looking around at people and, and just know that if it had not been for God, whew, the Lord on my side, God, don't you know the devil was trying to kill you? That was the devil. No, 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 that wasn't some just some, some mishap or some unfortunate situation. That was the devil. Shout amen up in here. Amen. Mm. The devil doesn't want you to trust God in all situations. He doesn't want you to do that. Hmm. And, and also, the devil's even a liar about prayer. Yeah, you don't need to pray. Don't worry about it. You're tired. Go on to sleep. Just take your behind on to sleep. Go on to sleep. Go on to sleep. Just lay on down. You're tired. You're tired. Go ahead and sleep. Just lay down. You're, you're tired. You've been working hard today. People frustrate you and stuff. Just go get, get, get to sleep. Go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Then you. <laughs> Some of y'all don't need nothing. Thank, I'm like, praise God. That you, 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 some, majo- most of y'all don't need nothing to put you to sleep. No medicine or nothing. Praise God. Shout amen up in here. You're gonna, my words will come back to you tonight because some of you are going to be like, Oh, yeah. Wake up. How did I get here? (laughs) Hallelujah. Watch this. The devil doesn't want you to praise God. Did you know that? Uh Uh-huh. He knows, watch this, that we're most vulnerable when we don't pray. Mm -hmm. There's something about praise, man. God, there's just something about it. Praise will make you forget about everybody around you. It's like a matrix matrix moment. Nobody but a circle around you. Nobody but you and, and God. Hallelujah. Okay, let, come on. Let me give you this. Can I get about, give me about 12 minutes. Can I get 12 minutes from you, okay? Hallelujah. Uh, type A personalities, Myers-Briggs in here. Don't worry about it. Don't look at your clock. Don't you watch your clock because I'm going to go ahead and tell you now this. I'm like Stephen A. Smith. This is my house, but you can come anytime. Praise God. <laughs> you ever heard Stephen A. Smith say that? <laughs> Pretty good. Write this down. What happens when we don't pray? Write it down. Come on. What happens when we don't pray? Because mm-hmm. there's some there's some prayerlessness saints up in here tonight. You ain't gonna pray life. If the one you got is weak. Just weak. And you're wondering why everything else ain't working. Mm-hmm. You think everybody against you, but you ain't praying. Mm-hmm. 
See, when you, when you ain't praying, you're in fear. You're in the spirit of fear. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Number one, what happens when you pray, n- number one, you'll become more anxious about things. You'll become more anxious about things. Let me, let me talk about that for a moment. Meaning, you'll become more concerned about things that you can't even change. Mm-hmm. You ever meet people like that? How are you doing? I don't know. I just don't know what my brother's going to do. My brother's going to do. I just don't know. I just don't know. Then they start crying. I just don't know. Tears coming all of them. If you ain't careful, you'll start crying with them. Give them a word. Amen. Ask them things like this. What you reading? Been reading your Bible? You been praying lately? Uh, who you been talking to? Uh, turn the television, television off. Amen. Learn to talk to God. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Here's something else that goes up in that number one. You will become more fearful about the things, some of which are unknown. Mm -hmm. I've had people tell me before, well, ain't nothing wrong, but that don't mean ain't nothing wrong. Huh? (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. Here's, Here's up under number one. Here it is. Here it is. Here's your problem. You have become a burden barrier. Who's supposed to be the burden bearer? Jesus. First Peter 5, 7, quote it. Casting all your cares, what? Upon him, why? He cares for him. So that's a burden bearer, right? Mm-hmm. We got family members like that, y'all. We got, we got brothers and sisters in Christ like that. There's some in here tonight. You trying to carry it. Mm-hmm. Can I help you with something? If you overload anything, it's going to break down a lot sooner than later. Mm-hmm. You wonder why you're up in the hospital, why you keep going. You're spending more time at the doctor's office than, than church. <laughs> All the nurses know your name. <laughs> hey, Claire. <laughs> Claire. Because mm-hmm. you're there so much, every week, two or three times. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Number two, number two, what happens when we don't pray? Number two. The person who doesn't pray will feel as if he is carrying the weight of the world. I said again, the person who doesn't pray will feel as if he or she is carrying the weight of the world. Y'all get this? Mm-hmm. And what do, you, what do you mean? But let me okay, let me unpack it. That person feels responsible for everything. For everything. Now, some people are just the opposite. They feel they're not responsible for anything. So out of everything that God is, he's what? He's balanced. He's balanced. Mm -hmm. They feel the weight of their souls. They feel the weight of their soul. Hmm. I'm still up under number two. This person has a heavy heart. Remember what Jesus said in John 14? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Mm-hmm. Number three, what happened when the person doesn't pray? Number three, the people who live with constant needs, frustrations, or worries rarely have much en- energy. I'll say it again. The people who live with constant needs, frustrations, or worries rarely have much energy. Why? Because they're so overwhelmed with sorrows, problems, disappointments, watch this, until they have become paralyzed. They can't even come to church. And they'll get defensive when you ask them about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They don't even feel like, watch this, they don't even feel like getting dressed to come to church. Mm -hmm. They were coming, give them credit. They were coming, but they got one sock on, another one didn't. They were coming. Still sitting there in that chair. Mm -hmm. Number four, what happens when a person doesn't pray? Number four, when a person becomes discouraged, he's in a state of weakness. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked about this earlier. The weaker a person becomes, the more they'll focus on 
themselves, their failures. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Remember, I, I used that illustration earlier about wildlife. They're vulnerable, they're vulnerable to predators. A lot of saints are like that. They're vulnerable to the devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you mean, Bishop? Write this down. The weak Christian drops his guard to the devil. When you should be standing what? Firm. But you were tired. You were overwhelmed. Come on, write this down. Still under number four. The person who prays has renewed energy and zest for living. You ever meet people, it just seems like, man, when they walk in a room, the whole room shifts. It seems like they light up the world, light that whole room up. Prayer will give you that kind of energy. Amen. Mm. Okay, let's go home now. You can pray in any position. You can. But I believe there are two most powerful positions to pray in. On your knees and also in that prostrate position. Powerful. They're powerful. Mm -hmm. Lying prostrate on the floor. It's an act of dependence and reliance on him. It's an act of saying, God, I can't do this. If he walked in this room right now, and he's not. But just hypothetically speaking, if the hope of glory walked in this room right now, how would we respond? I'll tell you how. If there was somebody in here tonight drunk, and there's not, all of us, including the drunk, would be eating carpet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's learn it on this side. Amen. Come on. I, I, you got to tell him. I, there may, I tell him every day of my life, Lord, I can't do it. I can't do it. But I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Amen. Mm. Come on, jot this down. Jot this down. I got five minutes. Five minutes? Amen. Jot down 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Say it. Pray without ceasing. This means that we should live with a God consciousness, meaning we are aware of God's presence at all times. God. Come on, write, write it down. Write this down. It also means that we see life through a God filter. Through a God filter. Through a God filter. You ever... In the summertime, you're, you're, you're filtering home. You ever, and you didn't change that thing in a couple of months. See how dirty it is? Mm -hmm. A lot of saints like that. Their, their life is like that. It's nasty. It's stinking. It's clogged up because they're not praying. <laughs> and you wonder why you ain't hearing from God. <laughs> wonder why you want to fight folk, get upset, tell them off. Okay. Amen. <laughs> uh. We, sh we should be asking ourselves, God, what, what, what do I do about this? That's how you talk to the Holy Spirit. That's how you talk to God the Father. That's how you talk to Jesus. I talk to the Holy Spirit like it all the time. What, what, what am I going to do about this? What should I do about this? Uh -huh. uh, but, it, but it also means, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it also means that we have an open connection to God. And uh, Say an open connection to God. One of the worst things in having a sorry carrier with a cell phone is you drop calls. Boy, that bit almost make you want to use that last cuss word, boss. It's my God. But we ain't, we're not going to do it. Praise God. But when you, you have an open line to God and you can't drop that call in prayer, I, I'm talking 24 7. He's available. See in the commercial? Husband's up. Talking to some insurance company. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I don't know. Some, whatever, State Farm. <laughs> really? What, Jake? From State Farm. Really? Really? What kind of pants? What kind of pants does he have on? Khakis. Khakis. <laughs> just like a wife. <laughs> and, and just like the husband. Here, sweetie. 
I've been married a long time. I can say this. Praise God. I know how it works. <laughs> at least, come on, come on, come on. Look, 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 look to another man and say, at least Bishop can admit it. Mm -hmm. Because if mom ain't happy, come on now. Come on, what's the rest of it? Ain't nobody happy. Parrot ain't talking to nothing. Boy. You don't even see a roach. I mean, nothing. Dog ain't barking. Nothing. Kids got the door closed. And there you are. <laughs> come on, let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Two minutes. Here's another thing. Listen to God speak to you. And pay attention when he speaks. Yeah, listen to God speak to you. And pay attention when he speaks. Stop saying something totally. That just irks me. Something, you're a believer. <laughs> man upstairs. I'm glad it ain't just a man. It's the God man upstairs. Hallelujah. If it was a man upstairs, he'd be flipping on you. Come on now, anybody? Come on, come on, come on. Come on now. How many of you know Grandma was right? Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Come on now. Can't say it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Learn to pray while, watch this, while you're driving, but keep your eyes open. Keep, don't, don't, no, you, no, 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 no. Keep them eyes open. You can't tell the highway patrol. Well, you know, I was praying. That's what happened. Well, well, pray about this ticket. You better show up on the 30th at the courthouse. Because if you don't, you'll be praying in jail. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, them generational curse. Ain't no generational curse. You're doing 75 in a 55, 45 mile zone, and you're talking about a generational curse. There's some consequences of that. Well, Bishop, I was on my way to work. Well, late again, late again, late again, late again. Mm -hmm. Here, here's another thing. Pray while you're working. You got some crazy people on that job. You ain't figured that out yet. Some of them people, as my grandpa uses, they are slam crazy. Come, just wave at me if you got some folk on your job like that. Come on now. They're crazy. And, and if you don't pray, watch this. They're going to make you crazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray while you're cleaning your home. Yeah. I hope you're cleaning your home now. Praise God. Firm this now. Pray while you clean your home. Firm this now. That's right. Some of y'all didn't say nothing. That's right. <laughs> Let me say it again. Pray while you clean your home. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Pray while you're cooking. Pray while you're cooking. Yeah. Pray while you're cooking. That's why this stuff ain't turned out right. <laughs> mama, mama, mine ain't turned out like yours, mama. Mama praying. Mama whipping that stuff. I came to Jesus just as I was. Thank you, Lord. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm in front of the line. No weapon formed against me. And you ain't even praying. My daddy made some bread one time. He's going to heaven so I can tell him. Uh, he made some bread one time, and I, my dog named Billy wouldn't eat me. <laughs> Mama laughed about that for years. <laughs> she liked that. Look, pray while exercising. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> In old church, they would say, you better say that again, preacher. <laughs> pray while exercising. Anybody exercising in here? You got to raise your hand. I'm just asking. <laughs> but if you are, raise your hand. Anybody exercising? I've been thinking about it, Bishop. Been, uh, here we go. Getting spooky spirit. I've been praying about it. <laughs> uh, pray while you're doing yard work. Pray while you're doing yard work. Amen. Uh, pray while you're doing everything. That's right. Whether you be in an office or a warehouse. Come on now, on the line, assembly line. Just pray while you're doing everything. Mm, hallelujah. Did y'all get something tonight? Amen. Well, give God praise if you did tonight. Praise God. Come on and stand. Hallelujah. Come on and stand. I got something I got to ask you. <laughs> 